On previous Ninja Theory games, we've had around 20 artists and designers working in partnership to create the game world. But given that Hellblade has such a small budget, our game world building team consists of just one person. With such limited resources, but a steadfast commitment to quality, our approach to creating the world has to be radically different. Viking lore is vast and richly detailed, um, and everyone's heard of Thor and Valhalla, but we were attracted to a different part of the Viking underworld, a place uh, called the Land of Mist and Fog, in which sits uh, the Hall of the Dead, Helheim. The starting point for the game world on our previous titles has always been the script. Designers would plan the levels and the gameplay around the action and locations in the story. Artists would then model and texture the levels before cutscenes, animations, lighting and effects would be added afterwards. The standard way of doing things isn't going to work on Hellblade because our world building team consists of just Dan, our principal environment artist. Dan will create the world and then the gameplay, design, story and art will have to fit around what he is able to create. I wanted Dan to be able to start building the world without having to wait for gameplay systems like combat to become ready. So I suggested to him that what we should aim to do is to build a world so rich, interesting and haunting that a player could lose themselves for hours just exploring the world without having to rely on those kinds of gameplay systems. We're not making a game where all you do is walk around for hours without any combat. But by saying that in theory it should be possible, Tamim has given the art team the power and the freedom to create a world without having to depend on gameplay designers. For story reasons, we wanted to take the Viking symbol that we used in our teaser and incorporate it into the landscape. Um, we researched a lot of Nordic terrain, um, but also the Greek island called Santorini, which is uh, an active volcanic caldera. So I began exploring uh, various aerial maps which use land and water as, as positive and negative space. You could even have beaches and things on this side maybe. So we picked one that had a good mix of natural and man-made elements. Um, after refining it a little further, I, I passed it over to Dan and he quickly just stamped it into the unreal terrain so we could run around the area and get a feel for its size. So uh, to get a sense of realism into the map, uh, we started looking at parts of the Nordic fjords um, and from here when we found areas that we liked, we took the satellite data uh, and then brought that into unreal and then used it with the uh, terrain tool to make what you can see here. The size and scale of the map was looking great and um, now it was time to think about locations within it. We needed to explore the details, uh, get, work out what it was themed on and the style of each area. So we pulled together a lot of reference on Pinterest um, and ultimately created a lot of style sheets which explored it in a lot more detail. So, so the next thing to do was to um, scout around the locations. Um, we knew that we wanted to have the central area uh, to be the most prominent and viewable from everywhere. Um, that way the player would be able to keep a sense of orientation. Um, so we picked out some different areas, um, raised and lowered the mountains accordingly um, and ended up with something like this. The scale of the world is now comparable to our previous AAA games, but given that Dan is our only environment artist, we have to find a way for him to create lots of content. We explored using kit parts and procedural systems on um, earlier projects like Razor. Now we want to take this forward onto Hellblade. Um, so the ultimate goal is to have about 95% of our assets to be reusable. This Unreal demo is quite a good example of, of how you can get away with a very small amount of assets. So I had an idea for the centre citadel which was to theme it on a storm-battered Viking ship. I tried to find some rocks that had an indication of something that felt like the hull of a Viking ship. And so with a combination of um, the rock being carved into and, and getting a lot more pattern in there, it, it's going to feel very very solid and grounded but still give you the shape that we require.
In reality, Vikings were mostly farmers and they didn't create the kind of big, huge structures and temples that we would want. But since the game is set in the mythical underworld of Helheim, um, this gives us artistic license to create something that's um, hugely oppressive, uh, massive in scale and, and something that feels daunting to the player as you approach and explore it. We're at the very beginning of the prototype phase of the project. Development at this stage is highly experimental and focused on answering the questions that we don't yet know the answers to, such as how do we build a world to this scale but keep it diverse and interesting? How does the player move around in this world and how open is the world? We'll be finding the answers to these questions over the next few weeks.